Reverend Conover, and I want to apologize, First Reformed Church, that was my era, typographical, not including him on the program. Reverend? Let us pray. Lord, we are here tonight to remember, to remember those whose lives were taken away, to remember those who sacrificed their lives on behalf of others, and to remember the heroes of that day a year ago. Lord, we are also here to stand for freedom, to stand for justice and to pray for peace bless what we do and say here tonight we ask it in your precious and holy name amen father from saint philip's one year ago today several thousand of our fellow citizens died as a result of terrorist attacks on our country as terrible as those moments were for all of us, and in the midst of such horrendous loss of life, we witnessed nonetheless extraordinary expressions of faith, courage, and compassion. The patriotism we felt in the days and months afterwards and continue to feel today calls ever more strongly to pursue liberty and justice for all Americans and for those around the world who continue to suffer from violence, poverty, and injustice. God, then of faithfulness, we come here tonight filled with both sorrow and hope, with joy and looking toward the future. We are in need of your grace to redirect our hearts. We are in need of your hope to rekindle and to sustain our passion for justice we are in need of your wisdom that we might recognize anew in your presence dwelling within us, calling us to live as people of light and hope rather than of darkness and fear. Amen. Thank you, Father. At this time, I would like, um, we have a very special song here this evening called The Torch of Freedom. It was written by a lifelong resident, John Otina. And I don't know if many of you remember, but many years ago, he did a song with the St. Philip's Choir, Say a Prayer to the Boys Over There. Well, the World Trade Center disaster was highly emotional for everyone, and John put it to words and to music. You do have a copy of it on your sheets. And since John is the humble person he is, if you take a look at the words and you read, the song is about a lady, a lady that was standing tall. And as she saw the towers come crumbling down, there was a tear in her eye. There was pain and sorrow in her heart. But she knew that with the sadness, there had to be courage. And then as she's standing there looking, this lady, she sees ashes. And then she sees spirits with a torch of freedom soaring up to the sky. She stood there in the name of liberty. She stood there in the name of freedom. And that lady, as we all know, is the Statue of Liberty. And I hope, John, I conveyed, as you would have wanted me to, the meaning of the words. The song is beautiful. Listen to it carefully. And if everyone would like to, please join in on the refrain, refrain portion.
John Otina. I'd like to call Jeannie Johnson forward to the podium. Jeannie is um, chairperson for our Council of the Arts. And in addition to the creation of this beautiful rendition, Hold the Torch of Freedom, I put Jeannie in touch with John and John's vision for a painting was there based on his words. And Jeannie and her artistic talent, Jeannie, don't hesitate, come forward, created from John's heart, mind, and soul and eyes, his vision through her hands. And the artwork is here this evening. Jeannie. Can I Thank, pick you. It? Thank you, Karen. <coughs> John asked me to say a few words on his behalf. Um, I met him a little over a week ago when I got a phone call from our mayor, Karen Chamberlain. I met with him and his wife, Arlene, and I found him to be a very quiet, modest, and low-key person, very sincere. I listened to his song and was very moved and impressed with the beauty of his music and his lyrics. I decided if he was agreeable, I would try to show what he expressed in his songs with my art. He wanted this particular stanza illustrated. She sees them rise from ashes, their spirits soaring high. They hold the torch of freedom as they come marching by. Now this piece I just finished today and I, I, it's a, a computer piece, and I'll explain parts of it if you, you can see it from where you're sitting. Of course, we have the Statue of Liberty, and then we have torches rising from the ashes. After I got done putting all the torches in place, I realized that there were nine torches, nine that represented the ninth of the month. 
John and I met again, and we decided that flags w would be appropriate. So we wanted 11 flags for 9-11. So we have 11 flags. We have the, the smoke and the ashes, and we have the flags. The flags are the, if you have the stamps, the United States stamps, it's kind of my rendition of the stamps that are out now. Um, they're also, the, the type that's used is called, and the font, I should say, is called New York, which I thought was appropriate for this picture. And ho I hope you're happy with it, John, and, and the, with the results. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with you. Thank you very much. On Sunday afternoon, we had a very moving ceremony at the Town Hall Monument, the Boy Scouts, for the benefit of one of the Scouts, Danny Molnar, had a burial of a time capsule, which the whole town contributed and will be opened in 25 years. So for this evening's ceremony, I asked the Girl Scouts to come forward, and I have to thank their wonderful leaders. They met with me, and I have to thank the girls because they helped put a wonderful program together. Children are our most precious things in life, and last year, the parents, the teachers, they gave our children the safety net that they needed a year ago, and I know that safety net's continued and all the more reason I thought it fitting that the Girl Scouts partake so greatly in this program and the Boy Scouts are here also as they walked in. So at this time I would like to call for the Junior Girl Scout Troop 707 Long and Franklin School and the Junior Girl Scout Troop and it's getting a little dark so if you can follow along with the program from Long School for the recipe for Old Glory. Ladies. and made for you a recipe the greatest in the land. First, we will put a heaping cup of Red for Courage True. And then we will add for loyalty a dash of Heavenly Blue. For purity, we will now put in a layer of snowy white. We will sprinkle in a pinch of stars to make it, make it come out just right. We will stir and stir. And then you will see what we have made.
beautiful recipe. Next, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance song from Junior Girl Scout Troop 707, Long and Franklin School, and Junior Girl Scout Troop 696, Long School. Ladies? Thank you, ladies. And now if Julia Mobilia would please come forward for the national anthem, please. that the darkness wouldn't have been upon us, so reading will manage. Well, on this very day, history was made in a horrible way. I remember being asked to sit as we were told the Twin Towers were hit. An act of terrorism was the blame as the Twin Towers went up into flames. Thousands of people became sad and cried, not knowing if their loved ones have died. The buildings that once stood tall and sound was now in bits and pieces on the ground. Thousands came to help clean the mess. The bodies they found became less and less. We found out those three colors don't run. As a nation, as a nation we came together as one. For all you involved with Ground Zero, you will always be remembered as a hero. I wrote this poem for those who died, and to tell Osama, you better run, you better hide. At this time, it's my pleasure to call Ray Curry, wonderful resident in town, lifelong, on the bagpipes once again to play Amazing Grace. Ray, could you please come forward? Thank you. Amy Horesco, Caitlin Kwiatkowski, Junior Girl Scouts from Franklin School, please come forward for reading from the Declaration of Independence.
once again. What a great bunch of Girl Scouts we have. Next we'll have Preamble to the Constitution, Deborah Brenny, Kristen Collado, Shelby Cooper, Alicia Mantazaris, Brianna Summers, all junior Girl Scouts from St. Phillips. Ladies. Wonderful job. Now the next youngster was supposed to be Shannon Fitzgerald. Plays the harp beautifully and I haven't heard any word and I don't know if she was able to make it. And if she hasn't, we thank her for her thought anyway. The next will be the Gettysburg Address. That's by the Melissa DeGiulia and Lisa Hickey from the Cadet Girl Scouts of Saddlebrook High School. Ladies. We cannot consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our po poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it could never forget what they did here. It is the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we are highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. A 
I think it's wonderful that the Girl Scouts chose the readings they did because it really brings forward the birth of our country. It reminds of us of those who fought, all of our veterans, lives that were lost, families affected, and every now and then the reminder is important to be there. Before we continue on with the soloist, there is a piece I'd like to share with everyone. Because certainly I'm sure as each of us woke up this morning, we woke up and we all remembered where we were a year ago. As the day continued, whether it was TV media, radio media, coworkers speaking to coworkers, meeting people out on the streets, there were many tears. It's, it's a very difficult day, most difficult for those families who lost. And I'd like very much to share this because it, it really gave me the chills when I first read it. It reads, on Monday we emailed jokes, on Tuesday we did not. On Monday we were fussing about praying in school. On Tuesday we would have been hard pressed to find a school where someone was not praying. On Monday our heroes were athletes. On Tuesday, we relearned who heroes are. On Monday, there were people trying to separate us by race, sex, color, and creed. On Tuesday, we were all holding hands. On Monday, we were irritated that our rebate checks had not arrived. On Tuesday, we gave money away gladly to people we had never met. On Monday, we were upset that we had to wait five minutes in a fast food line. On Tuesday, we stood in line for three to five hours to give blood for the dying. On Monday, we argued with our kids to clean up their rooms. On Tuesday, we couldn't get home fast enough to hug our kids. On Monday, we went to work as usual. On Tuesday, we went to work, but some of us didn't come home. On Monday, we had families. On Tuesday, we had orphans. And I thank all the Saddlebrook residents here all our service organizations, our fire, our police, ambulance, and I know I thanked them before, can't thank them anymore because it's those people that became those heroes spoken about here. And it's our youth and our children that we preserve the freedoms of this country for their future. Thank you, Saddlebrook. God bless this nation. God bless our families. God bless us all. And may we always stay together strong. And may God look down upon us that this never, ever happens again, not only in this great country, but in any nation around the world. And at this time, it's my great pleasure to call up another student from Saddlebrook, Anna Kudlak, who will be doing a soloist of her choice here this evening. Anna? stripes and bright stars through the perilous night or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was 
is still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the Wonderful job. It's my pleasure and pride, and, and school only started a week ago, and for the children to come into a new school year and prepare for this evening. I give a lot of credit to the students of our band, Mr. Wall, and they have a rendition to share with us here this evening. It's my pleasure to call up officer from United States Navy, Christine Calcaterra. Christine, please join us. proud of our female United States Navy officer. Petty officer, she corrected me. Christine returned home to us safely, thank God, two weeks ago. And she was on the USS George Washington. She was stationed at Jones Beach, and she patrolled the waters of the New York Harbor commencing on September 12th. And when I had the chance to speak with her recently, she had told me just before she returned here that she was on the shores of Afghanistan. And truly from our hearts, and I speak, I believe, for all of us, thank you for being there, for protecting our freedom, and for putting your life on the line. We love you dearly, Christine. Christine is here to sing God Bless America. That was her choice here this evening, and she has asked me to ask you to please join with her also. And we have our Brownie Troop 649. Aren't they cute? 
they were starting off with the preamble, but we never seem to follow the program as such, so they're here tonight to help Christine. Thank you, young ladies. Thank you, thank you. To hear young voices matched with someone of Christine's age, it's beautiful and it's what it's all about. At this time, I'm pleased to announce that we'll be hearing selections from our Saddlebrook High School chorus under the direction of Mrs. Verost. And here again, thank you, chorus and Mrs. Verost, for the short preparation.
Thank you. Most inspirational. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to call Barbara Panetta forward. I'm sure many of you know Barbara and her magnificent voice. on the program, Joshua Cesar, who has a short poem to read from Metro Church. Joshua? Good evening. I would just like to say a little words. We will never forget the attacks of 9-11, but we still remember the people who lost their lives the children who lost them, their mothers and their fathers. It will take us more than a lifetime to forget a moment like this. I can't believe this happened. I'll never forget what happened. I just thank God for my life in a moment like this. So turn to God for an answer in a moment like this. We will still remember. So turn to God with faith and he will help you get through a moment like this. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice, very touching. Marianne Mava will be singing He is Able from Metro Church. Marianne. best we can. Now we must leave it in his hands. Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, all 
together for my good and I will stand behind his word for he is able. How many of you know that to be true tonight? Questions seem to haunt us night and day. How could God allow my heart be torn this way? Does he listen when I call? Is he even there at all? Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. chooses not to move in the way we prayed he would confident he's working all together for my good and I will stand behind his word for he is Thank you. Inspirational, wonderful meaning. And as we're drawing to a conclusion here this evening, I hope we together have added some inspiration to all of you. When you go home tonight, hug your families, hug your friends tomorrow, but never forget that we're one together and the love that we have for each other will always sustain us through no matter what the sorrow may be. At this time, we had thought we would light the candles earlier. We've had, some people don't have any for that, I apologize, but I'd like to ask the scouts, the Girl Scouts to come up, at least to get our first candle lit. We were concerned about the wind this evening, so we will do the best that we can do. Ladies, please step forward any and all who would like to. And then as the Girl Scouts light, please everyone will join in and sing in God Bless America. And then after that, I would like our religious leaders from the Metro Church to conclude with the benediction. So as we're lighting the candles, and we continue to light for those who do have them, or if you have a flashlight here this evening, please rise while we're waiting for the candles to be lit in total. Um, I would also like to acknowledge our DJ, Jerry Dendrinos. He's here voluntarily as many many other people here this evening. Jerry, thank you very much. Okay. Light the torch of freedom here in Saddlebrook tonight. And be ready. The music is coming.
now our religious leaders from the Metro Church to conclude this evening's service. I want you to know it's not easy to remember. I think all of us will never forget where we were one year ago. On that morning, I was driving my wife and my daughter to the airport as they were taking a flight out of Newark to um, Los Angeles. They taxied behind Flight 93 that went down in Pennsylvania. They were forced landed uh, by the FAA down in Louisville, and for a week I couldn't uh, be with them. I thank God that it wasn't their flight that was chosen. Yet there is an anger on a day like this because we remember the fallen. There's got to be comfort for the living. I think of the innocent lives that were lost. They will not be forgotten. I think of the pictures that are sketched into my mind of people that were jumping out of windows and they will not be forgotten. I think of the stories of the firefighters and policemen that were lined up through the stairways of both towers rescuing, knowing something was very wrong and lost their lives. I become angry. They will not be forgotten. It seems like in American history when American blood was shed, America responded and action was taken. Mayor Chamberlain, thank you for the action even tonight for bringing peace to the hearts of residents here in Saddlebrook. We're going to pray and I want you to do something that might be unusual, but I want you to join hands with the person next to you. There's a solidarity in mourning. There's a solidarity in remembrance. There's a solidarity in hope. This time together was to remember the fallen of one year ago, but it was also to bring hope to a community here in Saddlebrook. And so that's exactly what we're going to pray. Father, we, we say very clearly that we can't do it without you, and so we invite you into the heart of this municipality more than you've ever been before, that you would continue to bring strength that you would calm fears, that you would strengthen resolve. God, we ask that you would bring action even within our hearts that we can help one another, assist one another in remembering the fallen because they will not be forgotten. And so, Lord, we pray strength to everyone that is here, everyone behind me, everyone in front of me, those that could not make it here tonight that there would be such strength and unity within this town that even people that drive through, ride through, walk through, jog through would sense it in the atmosphere. And so, Lord, we thank you for strength and comfort and peace. In the name of your Son, amen. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our ceremony. Please be careful as you're walking down the bleachers. And God bless everyone. Thank you.